How's it going guys? Conviction 454 here. Uh, so first things first, uh, I hope you guys don't mind the background. Um, right before I was getting ready to record this video, which I know I don't record all that often anymore, uh, I was playing around with this uh, SDK integrated into my Elgato face cam. And uh, I was just playing around with the software a little bit and I ended up uh, choosing to just use this background just for the purpose of this video. So um, yeah, today I just wanted to talk about my experience with the CompTIA 701 exam. I just took it and passed it this morning. Uh, and for those of you who watched my uh, Network Plus video that I recorded in November, uh, that'll give you some sort of idea as to how long I studied for the exam. So uh, essentially right after I passed the Network Plus exam, I went on ahead and started studying for the Security Plus. Uh, the reason is because one, all, well I won't say all, but a good portion of my training materials are free through my job. So I figured I might as well go on ahead and get into it. Um, and another is, well, I've just, lately I've just been really almost kind of fixated on the idea of improving my resume and just making sure that I improve my knowledge and my skills. Uh, I'll admit it, it's mainly because I hate my current job. Um, <laughs> like I, I absolutely detest it at this point and thinking about it now, I really should have done this a lot sooner. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to talk about my experience with this specific exam. I never took the, uh, the 601 or anything. I didn't even begin studying for it. Um, but I did just want to kind of get into the specifics of like what I saw, maybe not the specifics, but just give you some sort of like overview of what I saw and essentially what I used to study for the exam. So I would definitely say that this exam, at least for me specifically, was more difficult than the Network Plus. And the reason for that is because uh, as ironic as this may sound, the Network Plus is a bit more of a technical exam in my opinion because you have to know your network appliances how to use them as a matter of fact uh there's a little bit of security related concepts already in the network plus but it's very uh it's it's very limited so to speak and as opposed to the security plus which is really more about like process and procedural based things like how do you protect your network like what's risk management, for example, how do you uh, how do you form an incident response plan? Uh, what else? Like what 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 would entail a uh, like a change management process and how how would you secure X, Y, Z? And like what who are all the parties involved in certain security events? And like how, how could they possibly have you know affected this incident in any way and what could have been done to try and mitigate it at like the third party vendor level or like the cloud level it's 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 not a very technical exam um you see the the most technicality you're going to get out of this exam is really asking like about general uh, network appliances and what they can be used uh what they can be used for in terms of security so firewalls um like how would you uh like how would you protect a network switch from getting uh like injected with like a mac flood attack or something like that or how would you essentially like at at like the layer two layer three level what would you do in order to prevent the attacker from getting gaining even further access to the network and what sorts of steps what sorts of tools can you use in order to essentially protect the network so but in that regard, there weren't really a whole lot of questions pertaining to the technical side of things, at least not from what I saw. Now, there definitely will be questions about firewalls. Um, and I got, okay, so first, firstly, I did get 77 questions on this exam. I got two PBQs as opposed to five on the Network Plus. Um, now, in terms of what I saw on the PBQs, I had one question where a network was infected. And they were just trying, basically the question wanted me to figure out, okay, which of these devices is still infected by the malware and which of these devices is, hold on. Uh, sorry about that guy, I had, to, I had to move my webcam around. So anyways, what I was saying is there was an infected network. There was some sort of malware attack. I don't think the specifics of what type of malware were important, 
but the idea was to just pinpoint which of the devices in the network are still infected and which uh, of the devices were mitigated and there was some sort of like it was a prompt where you click on each of the different devices in the network and then you read all of the what they call logging information even though it wasn't really logs it was more like a like an outprint of like the events that took place but not in a traditional log format and basically there was something called like the svc host.exe or something like that uh, the behavior of this process made it appear as if it was malware so the idea was to see like just basically read the logs and then say okay is this device has this device been mitigated or is it still infected so it was a pretty easy pbq i would say uh, and then the next pbq uh, if i remember correctly so there was only two of them uh, so the next pbq was about different types of malware attacks so uh, it was like a drop down so you pick between like remote access trojan rootkit virus worm and then a few others and then you would pick there was a prompt it will tell you like so and so did this in order to gain access to this what type of malware or what type of attack did they use pick the the correct type of malware and then pick the remediation uh the next steps that you would take in order to mitigate the issue so those were two pretty easy performance based questions i would say and then honestly i would say i struggled a little bit more with the multiple choice questions because again it's all about processes and procedures uh there's a lot of memorization that comes into play and that's personally not where my skill set is because i i mean i'm i don't consider myself as detail oriented as other people do and so when i'm just reading through like you know a bunch of this uh you know a bunch of text and then i'm just you know trying to figure out like what's the main point behind this process as opposed to memorizing every single step in the process that's that's just how my mind works like i don't really have the propensity to just sit and just look and memorize okay this is step one this is step two this is step three i'm, I'm personally not not good at that um but I, I i suppose i was good enough at that to pass the security plus i would say uh really just just really the exam i would say it, it really um it focused a lot on like risk management and it focused a lot less on like cryptography which in my opinion was the weakest area for me coming in i also i did study that area the most as well but in terms of actually knowing your cryptography i may have gotten like two questions out of the 77 that really had anything to do with cryptography so maybe i lucked out there a little bit uh, but i would say the vast majority of it is memorizing pretty much the the terms that you see on the objectives like what's a memorandum of understanding what's a master service agreement what's a statement of work uh what's a sla what does bpa stand for what does irp stand for if you memorize that and then if you know each and every single one of those by heart like what they are what they entail maybe you know the steps that are um, included in each of those then you should really do fine on this exam because that was really the uh that was the majority of the exam but at the same time you know comp to the questions that they pick for the exams they get they pull out like obviously in this case i had 77 questions so they'll pull out 70 sand i'm sorry 77 random questions out of a bucket and then they'll just give you those questions so i imagine the database for those um the database was probably full of like maybe hundreds of thousands of random questions i'm not really sure how they do it uh, i don't work for comptra and honestly um in terms of taking their tests I, I don't think i've ever had a pleasant experience taking them even while passing um i mentioned this in my network plus video so now that i have all three certifications um thinking back on it now ironically the only one that i really struggled with was my a plus uh, i think that was the 1102 or like the 1002 whichever it might have been the 902 i don't remember how long i think it was i took it in 2021 so i think it was the uh, 1002 or something um and of course that was also my well it was my technically my second concert exam and i remember i didn't pass oh, i didn't pass it but um 
I didn't prepare for it as much as I could have on the first attempt. And then what I did afterwards was I retook it not even like three weeks later and then I passed it <laughs> by like a 10, 15 points. Uh, it's not a story that I'm really proud of, but I mean, I passed it and I have all three conscious certs now, or at least the, uh, what they call the trifecta. So, um, but yeah, for the security plus, I would say in terms of difficulty overall, it just, I don't think any of the comp exams are necessarily hard. I don't think they were intended to be difficult either. Um, now, there is some, a little bit of controversy on whether the security plus is really entry level or if it's more of like a intermediary cert. And in my opinion, I think it would still classify as like entry level, but like security based. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't think it's a particularly difficult exam. I said the same thing for the network plus though. Um, but yeah, genu I, I genuinely believe that the security plus is more difficult, but at the same time to say which one is harder than the other is kind of, it, it, you know, they, they cover different objectives, different topics, and people have different learning styles. And for the security plus, I think it definitely tailors to a specific learning style somebody that's very attentive to detail, somebody that's good at uh, like structurizing things, whereas the Network Plus is more technical, like I said before. Um, but yeah, in terms of my materials, I, the only thing that I only used, well, I used three materials, uh, very similar to the Network Plus, uh, the Total Seminars course for all country exams. I always recommend that, that you watch the Total Seminars course if you can. Uh, Jason Dion's practice exams uh, he did for the 701 th those just recently came out so when I saw them I only spent maybe like f I think it was two or three weeks really going through those exams and I noticed that after I watched the total seminars course took down a bunch of notes and then took Jason Dion's exams um, honestly like because yeah, those typically his exams are very difficult but for his exams I actually got like 70 80 percent on like my first attempt and I don't know if that may just have a matter may just be a matter of me preparing well prior to taking those exams or I, I don't know but I feel like the security plus was overall easier to prepare for but a harder exam I don't know if that really makes sense um but at the same time, I also studied for the Network Plus a little bit longer than I did Security Plus. So for, from uh, Security Plus, it was November to now. So that's what, three months? And then Network Plus, I studied for at least six months or something like that. So I don't know, maybe just a little bit more study time. Um, but yeah, between the Toll Seminars course, Jason Dion's practice exams, and then I want to I wanna recommend Exam Compass as well which is a uh, basically a site where you can take free quizzes. Uh, there's only like 14 or 15 of them out for the, specifically for the 701 right now. But I took all of those. I was doing very well on those. I mean, I, I was getting like 80, 90% on every single one except the one that was on cryptography and talking about stuff like asymmetric versus symmetric encryption, talking about the specific algorithms like there's ECC, DHE, uh, there's RSA, RC4, like block ciphers and stream ciphers. Again, you don't really, I didn't get a lot of questions about that on the exam anyway. So, but I also spent the most time studying that area. So I am a bit upset about that, but hey, I mean, you can't, it's really hard to be upset when you actually get the certification, you know? So yeah, bet between those three resources, there's really not much else that you should need, or at least that's not how much Oh, well, that, that's about as much as I needed. I, I didn't really use any other resources outside my own personal notes. And uh, the, th the funny thing is, I bought a textbook for like $10, $15 or an ebook specifically. I didn't read any of it. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I bought Professor Messer's course notes. I just watched the videos. I spent $30 on those, didn't use them, or at least hardly used them at all. I binged Professor Messer as a review towards the end of my study session. 
and then I rescheduled the exam to two weeks earlier and I ended up passing it so <laughs> it's a bit of a sporadic method of study but hey that's hey that's why I did to pass the exam and um yeah so those were my resources that I used and like I said just if you don't remember anything else from this video I would I would just strongly suggest that you really key in on the idea of systemizing and memorizing like the processes and procedures for the different types of, of security frameworks and the different uh, like the different terms and different agreements and you know like the paperwork side of things not so much as like the technical side of things um, it definitely helps if you know how to configure an access control list for example but in terms of technical stuff that's really the only thing I would say know about firewalls essentially and for the performance based questions and whatnot you should be fine um, at least based off of what I saw so I know there's probably going to be some other YouTubers that say some uh, some different stuff um, also one thing that I did do was uh, for the performance based questions is look at Cybercraft which is something a lot of people do the questions that you get on cert master though for the pbqs are at this point between the network plus and the security plus the questions on cert master are much more difficult the ones that i got on the exam frankly they were super easy or maybe not super easy but easy enough for me to at least be able to navigate through as a matter of fact i'm willing to bet that the performance based questions probably saved me because i only passed the exam by, by like 25 points so uh <laughs> and Honestly, it was the multiple choice questions towards the end that had me nervous because, again, I probably could have prepared longer. And there were some questions about which of the, like, okay, so in terms of question format, there's going to be a lot, a lot of scenario based questions. And it may ask you, like, which of the following would be the best or, like, the most important to consider or most important like mitigation technique to uh, use in this situation and then a lot of times it will look like some of the questions could have you know the, the what I'm trying to say is that the answer choices can look ambiguous and honestly that's part of the reason why I do not like taking contra exams is because sometimes I genuinely feel like the people that study for these exams know more than the people that make them and it's I'm just I'm just glad I'm done with it honestly <laughs> um, but yeah just I guess if, if you can find some practice questions there so really like heavy on scenarios to use those get used to following the scenario based questions and knowing how to pick them apart and just answer them logically based off of the objectives and if you just learn how to do that then you should be fine but it's it's not a very technical exam I would say at least not in the in the realm or in the space of using actual technology to do xyz more so than knowing what tool to use in a situation and knowing the processes and procedures and the steps that you would take in order to like mitigate a risk or to respond to an incident so if you do that then you should be more than fine on the exam um but yeah i think uh yeah for me personally that's really about all I have to share for about the exam. So, I mean, if you guys have any questions or anything, you can leave a comment in the comment section. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, just go into the exam. Don't be nervous. Just take your time and really read the question. As a matter of fact, the, the, like I said, the, I've said this before in a previous video, the actual questions on the test are probably going to be a lot easier than any practice exam that you'll find out there pretty much just about they they they're never like super wordy and there's not a bunch of word salad going on the, the question itself is short and concise usually but if you don't know your material then obviously it doesn't really matter how long or short the question is so i i i, I like i said it's not a difficult exam and uh for those of you who are getting ready to take the exam i wish you the best of luck but um anyways uh yeah I think that's going to be it for this video. Like I say, any questions, leave it in the comment section. I'll try to respond as soon as I can. All right. Peace.